the betrayal. The battle with the Dao continues, and the disappearance of Jidago has left you severely weakened. You consider retreating, but Moeza continues to fire arrows into the Earth Genie. Leilun appears keen to throw everything at it, when a familiar voice is suddenly heard from the doorway. Jidago is standing there, wielding what looks like an elaborate wooden rapier and beckoning you all to follow him and flee. And yet, it is not the Jidago of old. His temples show flecks of silver, and the same silver runs like tear tracks from his eyes down the front of his whiskery face. You are convinced that the figure is definitely Jidago though. If nothing else, his stupid grin convinces you of it. The tabaxi is there for only a fleeting second whilst you process all of this, and is then gone, running away from the battle, expecting you to follow. At this point, you become a disjointed unit. Quirky casts his spirit guardians, but flees. Healthy seeks to move away from the Dao at all costs. Moeza runs out of the west exit, but then turns to fire to protect those left in the room. Only Leilun seems keen to finish the creature off, but is unable to do it on her own. Jidago tries to rally his comrades to him, but they are indecisive. Only when the Dao leaves itself exposed from the cover it had been enjoying below the surface of the dungeon floor, does Leilun land a telling blow. This instills confidence in Helfi, who rushes to her aid and lashes the genie with fiery wrath. The Dao is troubled, but unable to do anything before Quirky returns to finish it with a lucky crossbow bolt. The creature melds with the floor, dropping its great maw and leaving no more evidence of its existence. Searching the room, you locate the Dao's treasure, which you place in your bag of holding. Of most interest to you though, is Jidago's return. The tabaxi takes a moment to calm down after the fight and consoles Moeza, his cousin, who had been distraught at his disappearance. Once they are both feeling better, Jidago tells his tale of his meeting with who he thinks was Sylvanas, the choices he was offered and the path that he took. He recalls the glowing orbs and his conclusions about the one moving towards the evil light being related to Helfi, but he keeps this thought to himself and instead shows off root and branch, his new weapons bestowed to destroy the threat of Tharosdun. He tells of the lengthy journey he took to obtain them, but the rest of you inform Jidago that he was only gone for a few seconds. Jidago's silver features also tell of an inner pain felt by the tabaxi, which he is loath to share. You contemplate Jidago's tale for a while as Quirky and Moeza heal as much of you as they can. But then you all decide that your spell resources are depleted and you need to rest in safety, electing to head away from the temple and into the tunnel leading to it to find an unpopulated cavern. All this time, Helfi has been strangely quiet and contemplative. She is clearly dealing with some internal battle and you come to realize how serious it is when inexplicably she attacks Leilun with her longsword. Somehow Leilun is able to react first and thrusts Windvane into her attacker. Helfi is badly injured and judges that flight is the best option. She runs towards the chasm where the Bulays were encountered and tries to span the stepping stones to the other side, but it goes horribly wrong as she slips and fails to grasp the edge of the platform and plummets 100 feet to the bottom. The rest of you are stunned at what is happening, but rally to Leilun, seeking Helfi for a revenge, or at the very least an explanation. Running to the edge of the chasm, your dark vision is not good enough to see the bottom. Jidago decides to do the cat thing and climb down, but ultimately no one knows where Helfi has ended up. But in fact, Helfi has survived the fall, and decides to dimension door her way to the southern temple exit. No one sees her appear there except for Leilun. However, Helfi has the jump on her this time and is able to sprint down the tunnel before anyone else reacts. You quickly decide that any chasing of Helfi down the dark and twisting corridors is folly. Even if Jidago could track her for a short time, the darkness and lack of impression for a footprint 
would soon make it impossible. You pause in incredulity to take stock of his situation, whilst healthy takes stock of hers. Thank you for listening to the progress of my Dungeons and Dragons group as they make their way through the Princes of the Apocalypse campaign setting. Watch out for further episodes, where we shall learn of the inner conflict within Helfi and a granting of a boon.